Now, there are two things I want to talk about. The brother's plan and the fifth year plan in that order. When I say that Aaron waited in the basement in chapter 100, people would respond with, well, the brother's plan is what made them declare war. And I would say that the brother's plan does not matter. That people are making the brother's plan more important than it actually is. Invader says, would Marley have attacked one day regardless? Maybe, but that is irrelevant to the fact that Aaron actively undermined all peace efforts and worked with Zeke to destabilize Marley from within. That much is a fact presented by the story. The only reason you guys put so much emphasis on the brother's plan is because of the faith in the fifth year plan's success. The dialogue in chapter 102 is sure, but the focus would be the fifth year plan. In my fifth year plan debunking video, when I remove the brother's plan, this fact presented by the story, nothing will change. Wait, what, Serenity? How is that possible? The story's finished. Yes, I know it sounds crazy, but it is possible. You just have to wait for me to show it. I'll make it so clear that Eren's rumbling was definitely the only solution the story gave. Eren was not the idiot, it was the author who wrote himself into a corner and made genocide the only answer by making it a kill or be killed situation. But the 50 year plan debunking video isn't this video, it's for later. Because the more ending defenders hype up the 50 year plan, the sweeter the 50 year plan debunking video will be. For now I'll talk about this, Marley declared war because of the brothers. I can use God, Moses, and the Hebrews in the book of Exodus from the Bible to show that the brother's plan does not matter. Tell me, is chapter 1's attack on Paradis the same as Aaron's attack on Liberio in chapter 100? Exodus chapter 1 verse 22. Then Pharaoh gave this order to all his people, throw every newborn Hebrew boy into the Nile River, but you may let girls live. This was Pharaoh's sin. Exodus chapter 11 verse 4 to 6 verse 8. I won't read the verses just yet, the only details you need to know for now is this. God says he will strike down the firstborn sons of the Egyptians. If Exodus 1, Pharaoh killed the sons of the Israelites, then in Exodus 11, God killed the sons of the Egyptians. It was a mirror, but there was a big difference between Exodus 1 and Exodus 11. When Pharaoh threw the Hebrew sons into the river, the Israelites had no wrongdoings. Their only mistake was existing and growing in number. They could not avoid having their sons slaughtered, exception being Moses' mother. But, for Exodus 11, God gave Pharaoh multiple opportunities to avoid having the Egyptian sons die. God was being patient. The death of the firstborn was plague 10, not plague 1. It was entirely preventable. Now a detail here is that the Pharaoh who had the Hebrew sons killed passed. He was dead, and a new Pharaoh took his place. What was the sin the current generation committed? If in Exodus 1, Pharaoh had the blood of the sons of the Hebrews on his hands, then in Exodus 11, Pharaoh was the one who had the blood of the sons of the Egyptians on his hands, because he refused to let the Hebrews go. This applies to AOT. I ask again, what is the difference between chapter 1 and chapter 100? Just like Exodus, the difference is that in chapter 1, the Paradisians had no wrongdoings. They were just peacefully existing for 100 years, yet they were still on the receiving end of Marley's terrorist attack. But was it only chapter 100 where Eren waited? No. Our oh, serenity is a misconception that Aaron was waiting. He orchestrated it with Zeke. If the 50 year plan was never going to work, then it wouldn't matter if Aaron went with Zeke. 50 year plan video, I'll get to this later. Ooh, now where was I? Uh, oh yes. Exodus and AOT were their examples of other sin that led to the biggest consequence of them all. Moses told Pharaoh, let my people go, and because he said no, the waters of Egypt turned to blood. Moses told Pharaoh, let my people go, and because he said no, frogs came up from the Nile River and they covered the land of Egypt. Moses told Pharaoh, let my people go, and because he said no, the dust became lice. This repeats again, plague 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, before the death of the firstborn. Now does this apply to AOT? Chapter 1, Marley broke down their first wall, and because they did, Carla died in Aaron's war of vengeance. Chapter 3, Marley broke down the wall again, and because they did, Aaron learned about his titan powers. Chapter 50, Marley tried kidnapping Aaron, and because they did, Aaron learned more about the founding titan powers. This repeats again, Marley 
Wally always on the attack, Aaron always on the defensive. Every single plague, every single sin was leading up and building up to the rumbling. Now before I go further, the difference between Exodus and AOT is that God and Moses tried talking to Pharaoh before the plagues, while AOT, Aaron didn't let Armin try. Number one, the reason I'm reading Exodus is to show that whether God tries talking things out or no, Pharaoh would have never let the Hebrews go. God says, let my people go. Pharaoh would say no. God doesn't say let my people go, just starts with the plagues, then only after he would ask, Pharaoh would still say no. Whether Aaron goes with Zeke or not, it wouldn't matter. The rumbling would be their only hope. Number two, in an alternate reality where Aaron does exactly what ending defenders want him to do, tries his absolute hardest to be diplomatic, goes with the 50 year plan, does not go with Zeke, nothing would change. Whether Aaron goes with Zeke or not, it wouldn't matter. The rumbling would be their only hope. Anyways, what is the difference between chapter 1 and chapter 100? Was Willie and the crowd the same as the Paradisians? No, they weren't. They were crying tears of joy at the idea of destroying Paradis. It was only after that did Aaron finally attack. In chapter 1, Berthold would have kicked down the wall regardless of what he sees. Pharaoh would have thrown the Hebrew boys into the Nile River regardless. Chapter 100, Aaron actually gave them a way out, unlike chapter 1. Exodus, all Pharaoh had to do was let the Hebrews go and none of this would have happened. The tenth plague was preventable. In Exodus, were there innocent Egyptians? Yes. But the Egyptian sons felt the consequence of Pharaoh's sin of killing the firstborn. The consequence of not letting the Hebrews go. Were there innocent people of the outside world? Yes. But the sons of the outside world felt the consequence of Marley's sin of attacking Paradis. The consequence of Marley declaring war. Sins of the father. Let me ask again, what is the difference between chapter 1 and chapter 100? Are we still blaming Aaron? Once I finish with the 50 year plan video, you'll understand why I keep saying Aaron waited here despite what people say about the brother's plan. Aaron and Zeke manipulated Marley. Number one, he removed the brother's plan and nothing would change. Number two, so what, Aaron still waited. Exodus chapter 10 verse 27 to 29, after the plague of darkness, the ninth plague. But the Lord hardened Pharaoh's heart once more and he would not let them go. Get out of here, Pharaoh shouted at Moses. I'm warning you, never come back to see me again. The day you see my face, you will die. Very well, Moses replied, I will never see your face again. Final chance to let the people go and Pharaoh didn't take it. I wonder what the result would be. Exodus chapter 11 verse 4 to 6 verse 8. Moses had announced to Pharaoh, this is what the Lord says. At midnight tonight I will pass through the heart of Egypt. All the firstborn sons will die in every family in Egypt, from the oldest son of Pharaoh who sits on his throne, to the oldest son of his lowliest servant girl who grinds the flour. Even the firstborn of all the livestock will die. Then a loud wail will rise throughout the land of Egypt. A wail like no one has heard before or will ever hear again. All the officials of Egypt will run to me and fall to the ground before me. Please leave, they will beg. Hurry and take all your followers with you. Only then will I go. Then, burning with anger, Moses left Pharaoh. The last plague was preventable. Now, after all that, we finally get to this. Aaron and Zeke manipulated Marley into declaring war on Paradis. Why? Because Aaron wanted it. Consider the rest of this section just me identifying what I should put in the 50 year plan debunking video. I mean, I already know what to put, but I just want to pretend that I don't for a second. So no, Aaron was not backed into a corner and peace was never an option because he actively worked against it. I'll put that on the list. So if this event of the brother's plan didn't happen, it would have resulted in peace with Paradis. He certainly did not try to do anything peacefully. Does Aaron waiting for his response not count as trying to resolve the situation peacefully? Chapter 108, Hanji says, Hizru was interested in keeping our resources all for themselves. They're not going to help us trade with other nations. Sure, there are organizations who want to protect the rights of Eldians, but they're considered freaks. No one will take them seriously. In fact, the world needs parody to be the root of all evil. 
They think their shared attitude brings them all together, protecting global stability. Chapter 108 Aaron says, In that case, does that mean we just have to rely on the Titan's rumble, and that we have no choice but to sacrifice Historia? It does. But Aaron certainly did not try to do anything peacefully. Peace was never an option because Aaron actively worked against it. When the scouts were waiting on Hizuru's response, Aaron was actively working against it by waiting with the scouts. I know he's talking about chapter 100, but Invader said Aaron certainly did not try to do anything peacefully. Again, does Aaron waiting for Hizuru not count as him hoping for an alternative solution? Invader says he never wanted peace to begin with. Chapter 131 Aaron says, that I will kill them is already set, which means we also never found a way for Parody to survive. Does this dialogue not show that the rumbling was a last resort? That if they found another way for Parody to survive that did not involve sacrificing Historia, Aaron would have went along with it. I'll answer this invader's comment in the 50 year plan debunking video by showing you what happens if Aaron goes down on his knees and begs to humanity for peace. I will show you why it was never going to go in the way this guy thinks is going to go. Moving on, this comment reads, You say that Aaron waited for Marley to declare war before attacking. Well yes, but why the enemy declared war? At least we acknowledge that Aaron waited. Because Aaron and Zeke manipulated the events for that to happen so they have an excuse to attack and proceed with their plan for rumbling. So no, Aaron didn't wait until the last moment because he wanted to avoid bloodshed. He waited so he could point and say to his people, See, they want us dead. The only salvation is the rumbling. Quick question, if the 50 year plan was never going to work, what is the point in Aaron waiting for Armin? Zero point in waiting. In an alternate reality where the brother's plan does not exist. Where Aaron went with the 50 year plan shows humanity the power of the rumbling without killing anybody. Have Aaron basically be on his knees begging and pleading to humanity for peace. I take it that it would actually result in peace. Another comment reads, It's the same talking points all over again. The rumbling would not have ended conflict. Ending conflict forever was not the point of the rumbling. The rumbling was not the only solution, especially not before Aaron raided Liberio. The brother's plan is already on the list, but thank you for your input. What do you mean Aaron did not want this to happen? Deep in his heart, he wanted to destroy the world. And I'll include that too, don't you worry. But for now, let me double down on debunking the brother's plan by reading out the part where God hardened Pharaoh's heart. Exodus chapter 11 verse 10. Moses and Aaron performed these miracles in Pharaoh's presence, but the Lord hardened Pharaoh's heart and he wouldn't let the Israelites leave the country. God hardened Pharaoh's heart, like how Aaron and Zeke manipulated Marley into declaring war. Would Pharaoh have not let the people go regardless? Maybe, but that is irrelevant to the fact that God actively undermined all peace efforts and worked with Moses to destabilize Egypt from within. That much is a fact presented by the story. But hey, listen, I'll cut ending defender some slack. Because the detail I need to say is that when God hardened Pharaoh's heart, it does not mean that Pharaoh was a good boy and God made him evil. It meant that Pharaoh was already rebellious and against God and God simply allowed his heart to continue being rebellious. 400 years of Pharaoh being a dictator and keeping the Hebrews enslaved. The long line of Pharaohs being worshipped as gods would make Pharaoh not let the Hebrews go. That's very different from Marley and the Tiber family. Marley, running a military dictatorship and keeping the Eldians in concentration camps for 100 years. Egypt running a dictatorship and keeping the Hebrews enslaved for 400 years. Very different. Would Pharaoh have let the Hebrews go without the 10 plagues? No. Marley, were they about to make peace with parody prior to the brothers plan? No. So it's just Marley hardening their own hearts. They would have done it even without Zeke. But if you still don't get it, I'll use an AOT ending example. If you like the ending of AOT and you harden your heart, you will continue liking the ending. 
If you hate the ending, you harden your heart, you will continue hating the ending. People think when God hardened Pharaoh's heart, that Pharaoh was going to let the Hebrews go, but was forced into not letting them go, so God would have the excuse to continue with the plagues. Or Pharaoh might have let the Hebrews go, but was forced into not letting them go, so God can continue with the plagues. Both cases God impeded on Pharaoh's free will, so Pharaoh was not really responsible. Uh, no, Pharaoh's position was always on not letting the Hebrews go. View hardening of the heart with this interpretation, making the heart heavy. If a scale is already heavily tipped to one side, and you increase that same side's weight, does it mean that the scale would all of a sudden be tipped to the other side? No, it would just tip further. If you did not increase that same side's weight, does it mean that the scale would have went to the other side? No, because it was already heavily tipped. From Plague 1 to Plague 5, Pharaoh hardened his own heart. Then from Plague 6 to 10 except for Hail, God hardened Pharaoh's heart, or made his heart heavy. If God did not harden Pharaoh's heart, would Pharaoh have let the Hebrews go? No. Aaron and Zeke manipulating Marley and Tiber and making them declare war is just a hardening of the heart situation. Hardening the hearts of Marley is just Zeke making Marley do what Marley would do. Did Marley need Zeke's input for the past 100 years? No. Serenity, I don't understand what this rambling about hardening hearts. What are you trying to say? I'm saying that you don't blame God for Pharaoh not letting the Hebrews go, just because God hardened Pharaoh's heart. Pharaoh was never going to let the Hebrews go, with or without God hardening his heart. Don't blame Aaron for Tiber declaring war because of the brother's plan. Marley was not going to let Parody go, with or without the brother's plan. Serenity, you still haven't acknowledged that Aaron said he wanted the rumbling. And ignoring what you just said about hardening hearts, Aaron still worked with Zeke to get Marley to declare war. They planned all of this. So Aaron is God. God was going to do the ten plagues. By the time they got to Egypt, he already planned the death of the firstborn. Why? Because he already knew that Pharaoh would never let the people go. Exodus chapter 3 verse 19 to 20 But I know that the king of Egypt will not let you go unless a mighty hand compels him. So I will stretch out my hand and strike the Egyptians with all the wonders that I will perform among them. After that, he will let you go. The plagues were a response to Pharaoh's refusal. For the first five plagues, Pharaoh would harden his own heart. Then from plague 6 to 10, except for hail, God would harden Pharaoh's heart. Serenity, wouldn't the difference between Exodus and AOT be that God actually told Pharaoh to let the people go before doing the plagues, while Aaron didn't? If Moses didn't tell Pharaoh to let the people go, would Pharaoh have let the people go? No. If Moses told Pharaoh to let the people go, would Pharaoh have let the people go? Also no. Congratulations, the plagues are the solution then. Wouldn't matter if God asked. If Paradi did not tell the world they wanted peace, would the world have given them peace? Obviously no. But if Paradis told the world they wanted peace, would the world have given them peace? Edie say yes, I say no. Because confirming the suspicions of humanity with a partial rumbling is not going to go in the way Edies think it's going to go. Now let me continue on with Exodus 4. God has multiple motivations. You think God just wanted the ten plagues to free his people? Each plague was specific to an Egyptian god or gods. Showcase God's power and sovereignty over the Egyptians. Exodus chapter 9 verse 13 to 19. The Plague of Hail. Then the Lord said to Moses, Get up early in the morning, confront Pharaoh and say to him, This is what the Lord, the God of the Hebrews, says. Let my people go so that they may worship me. Or this time I will send the full force of my plagues against you and against your officials and your people, so you may know that there is no one like me in all the earth. For by now I could have stretched out my hand and struck you and your people with a plague that would have wiped you off the earth. But I have raised you up for this very purpose, that I might show you my power and that my name might be proclaimed in all the earth. You still set yourself against my people and will not let them go. 
Therefore, at this time tomorrow, I will send the worst hailstorm that has ever fallen on Egypt, from the day it was founded till now. Give an order now to bring your livestock and everything you have in the field to a place of shelter, because the hail will fall on every person and animal that has not been brought in and is still out in the field, and they will die. Well, 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 surely this means that God was a rebel against peace like Aaron. God had other options like diplomacy, but he chose to destabilize Pharaoh's heart. Hardening the heart does not mean that Pharaoh was going to free the Hebrews, but God forbid him from doing so. Pharaoh would have always chosen to not let the Hebrews go. Without God hardening Pharaoh's heart, Pharaoh would have hardened his own heart. Did God want the ten plagues? Sure, but Pharaoh had the free will to choose to not sin. Unlike Exodus 1, God gave Pharaoh a way out. Unlike chapter 1, Aaron gave the outside world a way out. But wait, Serenity, if Aaron really gave the outside world a way out, as you say, he should have gone with the 50-year plan and used the partial rumbling to threaten the world. That's the proper way to give the outside world a way out. The 50-year plan would never go in the way EDs think it's going to go. It's not going to give them the results they expect. Let me go a little on the 50-year plan video. B -b but first, I need somebody to hype up the 50-year plan. Back to this commenter then. Obviously, I know this is propping up the ending defender idea that Eren's rumbling was not necessary. But Serenity, he doesn't even mention the 50-year plan. He doesn't need to. If the rumbling was the only answer, then the brothers making Marley declare war would not matter. But if you're an ending defender who believed in the 50-year plan, then of course you would hyper-focus on Aaron going along with Zeke. Bouncer responds to this comment. You are speaking facts, but morons like that serenity dude want to treat Aaron like a sad whittle victim as if he didn't just enable the people who are oppressing his people. Wow, I thought I needed a guy to hype up the 50-year plan. Instead, I got a guy hyping up the other guy hyping up the 50-year plan. Again, Bouncer doesn't refer to the 50-year plan. But again, again, they don't need to. If you believe that diplomacy was actually a possibility, you would hyper-focus on the brother's plan. Well, you see, Aaron knew the Tiber was using the declaration of war as bait. And Aaron purposely bit the bait to get all the world to genocide parody. That's great and all, but what did Aaron and the scouts lose? The chance of peace through diplomacy. Ruined by the brother's plan. But what happens if you believe that there was no chance of peace through diplomacy? It's 0% chance multiplied by 0, which equates to 0. They didn't lose anything. But anyways, Bouncer has another comment. You are speaking facts, but people like that serenity idiot want to pretend that Aaron is a poor little victim as if he didn't enable the people who are oppressing his people. You know you can edit a comment on YouTube, eh? Oh, don't tell me you did this for the sake of the narrative technique of repetition. 24th of July 2022 regarding Sadie Chief Simonga. Now my problem with is with the dialogue is superfluous. I can agree with this criticism on the dialogue, but I'm left thinking. So, we can criticize Saint Chi for being unnecessary when this entire second comment was unnecessary. Literally, you can edit a comment on YouTube. This isn't Twitter, buddy. Now, if you notice, this particular section for Bouncer doesn't seem very relevant to the video. Don't worry, I'm just putting this here so I can gloat later once I finish the 50-year plan video. Because in my eyes, people are putting way too much emphasis on the brother's plan as if it will change all history if you remove it. Bouncer, brother, I normally ignore ya, but I want to use your comment because you made a tiny point I want to highlight. Here it is, the entire reason I brought Bouncer's comment in. Bouncer says, sure, Willie is at fault, but Aaron is too and they can't accept that because if they did, their interpretation shatters into a million pieces. Bouncer buddy, I see you were pissed. You rewrote the same comment just to add this. Interpretation shatters into a million pieces. That writing major doing major work, but in all seriousness... I have to use your own words later once I shatter the 50-year plan. Bouncy buddy, don't you worry. I'll save you from the delusion that is the 50-year plan. Aaron had three choices. 50-year plan, euthanasia, and the rumbling. 
So let me ask, when, not if, when I debunk the 50-year plan and every idea that diplomacy was ever possible in the story of AOT, what happens exactly? When I establish that diplomacy was never an option, the chance that diplomacy succeeds was 0%, no chance of success? What happens exactly? Remove the 50-year plan we're left with? Euthanasia is the only alternative. Remove the 50-year plan, and Marley declaring war would 100% not be Aaron's fault, since the rumbling would be the only option he was given. He would just be accelerating when they do the rumbling. Because if we were to go into an alternate reality, where Eren does exactly what invaders and ending defenders wanted him to do, go along with the 50-year plan and not go with Zeke. Go with a partial rumbling to intimidate humanity and get them to sign peace treaties. Make it even better by having Eren be on his knees, begging and pleading to humanity for peace. What would the result be according to EDs? I assume peace for parody. If there was such a thing as this alternate reality, a perfect place to test out whether the brothers' plan was the make or break event that ending defenders hype it up to be. 50 a plan video, just wait for it. Now in regard to the brothers making Marley declare war, it doesn't matter that the brothers made them declare war, Marley was always going to do it. Refer to the hardening of the heart. If God wanted to free his people, then why did God harden Pharaoh's heart to not let the people go? It's contradictory. It doesn't matter. 400 years Pharaoh had the Hebrews enslaved. What's 400 years more? Pharaoh was never going to let the Hebrews go with or without God hardening his heart. Sure, Willie is at fault, but Aaron is too, and they can't accept that, because if they did, their interpretation shatters into a million pieces. You're so dramatic, for what? Because Aaron put the island in danger by going along with Zeke. The 50-year plan is not going to go in the way ending defenders think it's going to go. Any plan that involves starting the rumbling is not going to end with peace treaties and kumbayas. Any plan that involves starting the rumbling for any reason at all is going to endanger the island by confirming the suspicions of humanity that Eldians are a threat that need to be exterminated. 50-year plan, partial rumbling, euthanasia. Starting the rumbling still puts the island in danger. If the result is the same, then it doesn't matter that Aaron went along with Zeke. Let me repeat, the complaint here is that Aaron endangered the island by going with Zeke. Well, showing off a partial rumbling in the 50-year plan would endanger the island as well. What are we complaining about? Now, to be more accurate, the complaint here wasn't Aaron endangering the island, it was actually Aaron enabling his oppressors who were oppressing his people. Doesn't change anything, but just to be sure. Showing off a partial rumbling in the 50-year plan still enables Marley by giving the outside world the confirmation that the island really is a threat. So again, what are we complaining about? Aaron and Zeke made Marley declare war. Ah, okay then. Back to the festival. See all the dialogue about how the outside world would not have attacked with Marley if Aaron had not attacked. I will literally show in the 50 year plan video that this doesn't matter. Because if Aaron did not go with Zeke, where would Aaron be? With Armin, obviously. Aaron would wait on Armin to talk things out? Then that diplomacy fails. Then they resort to the 50 year plan and a partial rumbling without killing anybody. But this confirms the suspicions of humanity that Eldians and Paradi are a threat that need to be removed. Then humanity will be at their doorstep, wanting the island's complete extermination. Then Eren goes with the full rumbling. Nothing changes with the removal of the brother's plan. But Serenity, aren't these just guesses on what would happen? Wait for the 50 year plan video, because the answer is no. The brother's plan does not matter. With the festival, the question wasn't, will Marley declare war and invade parody? It was, when will Marley declare war and invade parody? Pharaoh was never going to let the Hebrews go, with or without God hardening his heart. Marley was always going to declare war and invade Paradis, with or without the brother's plan. 
So why did Aaron go with Zeke to accelerate the declaration? If you go with the view that the 50-year plan would never work, what would Aaron be waiting for if he did not go with Zeke? For Armin's diplomacy, that would also never work. Aaron would have been waiting on nothing because Armin would have given him nothing. Why did Aaron go with Zeke to accelerate the declaration? Outside of the obvious, running out of time. Because the scouts would sacrifice Historia if diplomacy failed. So, if we want to be accurate, it's not the brother's plan that made Marley declare war. It was Zeke's plan and Aaron was just going along with it to avoid sacrificing Historia. Chapter 123, Armin says. If we abandon the path of peace, we'll have no option but to conspire with Zeke and his plans. We'd put our fate in his hands and be forced to sacrifice the lives of the children that Historia will bring into the world. So, if diplomacy fails, they'll sacrifice Historia. Yes, and we're here in order to avoid that future. Our hopes are riding on this association to protect the subjects of Ymir, appearing at the international forum being held tomorrow. If it does look like we could cooperate with them, only then you will declare that the island of Paradis seeks peace. Perfect. If the path of peace is not possible for Paradis, they'll sacrifice Historia. All their hopes on the Eldian Rights meeting. So, given that the Eldian Rights meeting failed, the scouts will sacrifice Historia. If the idea was that Aaron should have waited for more Eldian Rights meetings or something of that sort, no. Chapter 108, Hanji says, Sure, there are organizations who want to protect the rights of Eldians, but they're considered freaks. No one will take them seriously. I'm supposed to believe that Aaron should have waited for Armin to find success with the Eldian Rights group, that the outside world does not take seriously. Hanji, one of the smartest characters in AOT, put their hopes on the Eldian Rights group that the world does not take seriously. I'm supposed to believe that Eren should have trusted in the scouts and that he was an idiot for going with the rumbling and not waiting on Armin and Hanji. Yeah, okay, back to the 50-year plan. What about the 50-year plan? Wait for the 50-year plan? There was no point in Eren waiting for something guaranteed to fail. If diplomacy was never going to work, and I'll prove it in the 50-year plan video, then Aaron would just be waiting for the scouts to sacrifice Historia, while everyone else would do that as a last resort. Aaron was the only one who never viewed it as an option. Now enough about this, I'll save it for the 50 year plan debunking video. Let's move on. But Serenity, Marley declared war because of the brothers and you still haven't talked about Aaron wanting the rumbling. An analysis of Aaron is not complete without acknowledging that Aaron wanted the rumbling because of his nature. If you were to ask me if Aaron wanted the rumbling, I would say both yes and no. There's a very specific character I have in mind for this, but I'm trying hard to not spoil the 50 year plan video. So I'll use this instead. Use God as reference. Does God want to hand down judgment? Yes, because sin goes against his nature, but he also wants sinners to repent. Therefore, God waits. 2 Peter chapter 3 verse 9 The Lord is not slow in keeping his promise as some understand slowness. Instead, he is patient with you, not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. But Serenity, if Aaron was being patient, then why did he leave after a single Eldine Rites meeting? If my answer using Hanji was not good enough, don't worry. I'll answer this again when I talk about Aaron being the perfect messiah. I'll keep it simple, Aaron was being patient in the basement. Romans chapter 9 verse 22 What if God, although choosing to show his wrath and make his power known, bore with great patience the objects of his wrath, prepared for destruction? If that did not make any sense, here's a different translation. Romans chapter 9 verse 22 In the same way, even though God has the right to show his anger and his power, he is very patient with those in whom his anger falls. 
who are destined for destruction. With Historia and with Zeke, Eren already planned to destroy the world before he went to Marley, but he was still being patient. But Eren already planned to attack. God already planned the ten plagues before Moses even got to Egypt. But he gave Pharaoh a way out. Better than what the other Pharaoh did in Exodus 1. Aaron gave the outside world a way out by waiting it out. Better than what Marley did in chapter 1. Here, let me give another example aside from Moses. The story of Jonah. Jonah chapter 1 verse 1 to 2. The word of the Lord came to Jonah, son of Amittai. Go to the great city of Nineveh and preach against it, because its wickedness has come up before me. In response, Jonah runs away. Why? Because Jonah wanted Nineveh to be destroyed. And he knew that if he preached to them and they repented, God would actually not go ahead with the judgment. I'm not going to say that God would change his mind because that's not how it works. Back to Jonah. Long story short, big fish shenanigans happen and Jonah finally goes to Nineveh. Jonah chapter 3 verse 1 to 9. Then the word of the Lord came to Jonah a second time. Go to the great city of Nineveh and proclaim to it the message I give you. Jonah obeyed the word of the Lord and went to Nineveh. Now Nineveh was a very large city. It took three days to go through it. Jonah began by going a day's journey into the city, proclaiming, Forty more days and Nineveh will be overthrown. The Ninevites believed God. A fast was proclaimed in all of them, from the greatest to the least, put on sackcloth. When Jonah's warning reached the king of Nineveh, he rose from his throne, took off his royal robes, covered himself with sackcloth, and sat down in the dust. This is the proclamation he issued in Nineveh. By the decree of the king and his nobles, do not let people or animals, herds or flocks taste anything. Do not let them eat or drink. But let people and animals be covered with sackcloth. Let everyone call urgently on God. Let them give up their evil ways and their violence. Who knows, God may yet relent, and with compassion, turn from his fierce anger so that we will not perish. Now am I saying that the outside world should have been kissing Aaron's boots? No. I'm saying the outside world should have given Aaron some hope that peace was possible without the rumbling. But wait, Serenity, if Aaron was really trying to wait for hope as you say, then he should have waited longer with the scouts, rather than leave at the first Eldian Rites meeting. I am going to keep repeating this, because EDs keep repeating this. Aaron already knew peace talks wouldn't work, because of his memories of the future. No, how about memories of the past? The outside humanity's desire was to exterminate all the Eldians. Three examples. Chapter 87 Gross says, There's no living thing in the world like you Eldians, you subjects of Ymir. You're monsters in human skin, and it's a terrifying nightmare that anyone ever let you reproduce. All of humanity wishes for the same thing, to wipe out every last Eldian. Chapter 89, Kruger says, The only reason they've kept so many Eldians alive inside the interment area is because each living Eldian is one more pure titan they can add to their military forces. Most people think it'd be better to slaughter us all than turn us into such unreliable weapons. Invader says Marley might, maybe, maybe invade Parody later without Aaron and Zeke's plan. Once I release the 50 year plan debunking video, you'll realize Invaders was playing stupid here again. Marley will invade Parody later without Aaron and Zeke. Now, whether the outside world joins Marley, it won't matter, because once Parody gets forced into doing a partial rumbling, the entire world will join Marley, either in arms or in death. So what if Paradis does not get forced into doing a partial rumbling? Perfect, I'll show you that they will even without the brother's plan. Now for Marley invading, oh, we have to play up the uncertainty because we don't want to make Marley the villains. Perhaps, might, maybe, Marley would not want the island resources in the founding titan. It's not like that was their best course of action. I know that one day they will return for the island's resources. And to develop it, they'll need to eliminate all of the pure titans. If they acquire the founding titan held by the king of the walls, they will again begin to question whether the Eldians should continue to exist. And they will use us as weapons or eradicate us, one or the other. 
Chapter 114, the janitor says, Visitors this early, you don't see that every day? I'll come back later. The moment the janitor realized that they were Eldians is the moment this little positive attitude flipped. You demons have tainted my workplace. You descendants of devils who massacred every last thing you could. It be natural for your kind to be exterminated. No amount of talking would work, so the rumbling would be the only solution. Ignoring the 50 year plan because I'm doing it later. Ignore the partial rumbling because that has the same problem as the 50 year plan. What are the talking it out solutions? Uh, wait for more Eldian rights meetings. The people who vouch for Eldians are viewed as freaks and are not taken seriously. Side with the enemies of Marley, like the Middle East who sided with Marley after getting dunked on by Marley. How will Parody side with other countries who hate Eldians more than Marley? Maybe Hizaru is a good example of a good-hearted country looking out for parody, except they cared about the island's resources so they could make money. Such wonderful, foolproof plans perfect for protecting parody, not really. No amount of talking would work, the rumbling was the only solution. That's why the brother's plan doesn't matter, because remember, the question wasn't, will Marley invade parody? It was when will Marley invade parody? Yes, Aaron did plan to do the rumbling but he was still waiting it out. God planned to judge Nineveh for their grievous sin before Jonah even got to Nineveh, but God still waited. Jonah chapter 3 verse 9 to 10. Who knows, God may yet relent, and with compassion, turn from his fierce anger so that we will not perish. When God saw what they did, and how they turned from their evil ways, he relented and did not bring on them the destruction he had threatened. Did God plan to bring judgment on Nineveh? Sure, the verse does say that, but he still waited. Then Nineveh repented and saved their children. Did God plan to bring down the plagues onto Egypt? Yes. Did God plan for the death of the firstborn? Yes. Even before Moses went back to Egypt? Yes. But God still waited. Pharaoh could have prevented the plagues from happening by just letting the people go. His pride would be his downfall. Was the brothers' plan the reason Marley declared war? The reason they declared war earlier? Sure, but Aaron still waited in the basement. By serenity, Nineveh had a prophet preaching against it while the outside world didn't. You'll be happy to know that the outside world would not be Nineveh, it would be Egypt. The plagues were the only solution because Moses talking it out would never work. God knew that already. Regardless of what Aaron does, the rumbling would be the only solution, Aaron knew that already. The point of reading Jonah isn't to show that talking works, because Exodus and Jonah both included prophets talking it out, but only one worked. No, the point was to show that even with Aaron planning it all out, he would still be willing to not go through with the rumbling if humanity could change. But if you're still not convinced that Aaron would be able to change his mind, just wait for the 50 year plan video. Now what else? A story of Jonah, maybe Jonah was actually Aaron since Aaron left like Jonah left. Left after waiting for the outcome of the Eldian Rights meeting. Well, even after the Eldian Rights meeting, he still waited in the basement. And one more thing before I get to the next section. What I said about God forgiving the repentant hearts is not a reason to stop the rumbling. The Marleans promising to be better is not good enough. Nineveh repented before their judgment day, not during their judgment day. Clean the cup before it overflows, not after. Were the children's cup clean of sin? Yes, they were innocent children. But if the consequences of the parents' actions would be felt by their children, then it is the role of the adults to clean the cup. The adults of the outside world had their children by the hand, could have left the forest at the festival. But instead, they dragged their children deeper into the forest, went to play poke the bear with their children in tow. Fuck around and find out, I wonder how that would go. The cup of iniquity. The Amorites in the Bible were given 400 years by God to repent and turn from their evil ways. But nothing changed, so God had the Amorites removed. A bit extreme, but do you get it? There is such a thing as too late, by the way. 
Spoilers for the Noah section. Once the door to Noah's Ark closes, it's not supposed to open. They can bang on the door all they want, it's not going to open. Once the rumbling starts, you're not supposed to stop it.